Hello, Internet! Welcome to Glorzo! The Glorzo that overthinks the Glorzo out of all your favorite Glorzos, Glorzo. We're back on the Rick and Morty Quick Theory bandwagon this week to talk about an episode that I initially dismissed as just a wacky space adventure during my first watch. Season 4, Episode 7's Promortius. I mean, can you really blame me? It ends with Rick and Morty pooping their pants in the living room. For a show that requires a very high IQ to understand, this one seemed like a pretty straightforward sci-fi riff on Alien with a little bit of Star Wars thrown in for good measure. The truth, though, is that this is an episode all about philosophy. Now, nah, keep your Glorzo on. I promise this episode will be better than your college philosophy class and won't have a guy who sits in the corner with dreadlocks and brings his acoustic guitar to class. He'll just be, you know, down in the comments with his acoustic guitar. To quickly recap, the episode opens on Rick and Morty controlled by parasites. They escape the facehuggers and kill them. Last thing I remember, I was ugh, in a cave looking at some wet egg and... Oh, that probably did it. I told you not to look at that egg! As they explore this alien parasite society on their way to escape, they discover that it seems to be worshipful of something called Glorzo. Glorzo. How's it going? Sub glory to Glorzo. Totally. Love Glorzo. Glorzo is peace. Peace. Glorzo. These aliens plan to Glorzo Earth, meaning take over all its inhabitants. Rick and Morty make a daring escape and decimate the alien society on their way out of town. Feels kind of good when there's no guilt, huh? Yeah, it's, it's like in Star Wars. Yeah, just like in Star Wars. Later, they realize they left Summer behind. And how Summer? Did she have fun too? After returning to the planet and finding Summer, Rick, Morty, and us as the viewer learn that the face huggers have a 30-minute life cycle of attaching themselves to the faces of host bodies, pooping out an egg, and then promptly dying. Wait, so all you do is live half an hour, Boing. eggs, and die? Yes, we love it. I'll do it right now. Summer introduces the revolutionary idea of, you know, not doing that. Okay, you guys don't have to listen to me, but I vote you don't do that. And thus, a new Glorzo society is born. We find out that in this new society, Steve, the parasite that had latched onto Morty, and Bruce, the parasite that had latched onto Rick, each had two different philosophical points of view. And just like that, the philosophy is suddenly back in my sci-fi animated series about farts and poop jokes. Steve loves the plan of this new Glorzo society, where the lifespan is longer than 30 minutes. A sort of self-chosen evolution. Bruce, the parasite controlling Rick, thinks that the old ways of living for 30 minutes and pooping out an egg were better, and takes to Glorzo Tube to spread his message to the masses. Here's a scientific fact I'm not allowed to say. Our hosts are biologically designed to incubate our eggs. If it doesn't, please like and subscribe. New videos every Glorz day. The two of them fight about it. All you care about is progress and society and skyscrapers. You don't care about Boing. biology. How come you haven't laid an egg inside this old man yet? Because I do what I want. And then they have themselves the world's most awkward makeout session. In a show that I thought had capped itself out at awkwardness with the dragon episode. This season has just been very uncomfortable with Rick and Morty's relationship. I'm just saying. These two not only give us one of the most uncomfortable 15 seconds of TV kissing that I've ever seen, but they also give us two opposing philosophical arguments. The appeal to nature versus evolutionary ethics. The appeal to nature is embodied by Bruce. This is the idea that whatever is natural is always going to be for the best. We were born to plant eggs in a host and die 30 minutes later. If this is what nature gave us, then it's what we should stick to. If it's not natural and it didn't come from nature, then it's inherently bad. So choosing to not die 30 minutes after you're born is going to be a big no-no. Bruce's natural is best mentality seems a little fatalistic coming from the perspective of us, humans that live 90 plus years. But this is far from an out-of-the-ballpark philosophy, and you may even be living it yourself. Ever choose between two things at the grocery store and pick up the one that says natural or organic on the label because it must be the better one? This is the appeal to nature. Unfortunately, the appeal to nature is largely deemed a fallacy. Research in the real world doesn't support the idea that just because something is natural, it's better. And when you play out an appeal to argument nature, a lot of times you can't even define whether or not something is natural in the first place. For instance, you might buy a nice organic banana from the grocery store thinking that it's natural, but it turns out the bananas we eat now look nothing like their ancestor natural bananas. Humans have cultivated bananas to look the way that they do over thousands of years. Still natural to eat a banana after all that human tampering? It's unclear. Is farming food even natural, or should we be only eating things that we forage from nature? Even in the show, Bruce himself preaches a natural 
natural life, yet he refuses to poop his egg and die. He's sitting around making videos for Glorzo Tube, shilling for the likes like an intergalactic wolfie raps. Even halfway across the universe, it still feels really awkward. So Bruce is clearly wrong here, right? An appeal to nature is a fallacy. It's been proven many times in every area to be a fallacy. Steve is the one who's right then. Onward and upward through progress. He's right, right? Right? Well, it's certainly tempting to agree with him. After all, the movement that Summer starts seems to be moving in the direction of less death and more flourishing. It's an opportunity for the people of Glorzo to live out their lives. They can go to school, they can invent things, they create a thriving metropolis. Everything seems cool, up until Summer decides that she wants to leave the planet, and suddenly they go from worshipping her as empress to executing her. She's trying to escape with her family. My time to shine. Execute her! Wow, just like that, guys. No trial, no starting with a simple downgrade of, you know what, you don't get to be empress anymore, but maybe we don't go to immediately killing you? Though it's played for the laughs, it illustrates the harsh truth. Progress always comes with a cost, and the cost is paid by pretty much anyone who isn't Glorzo. This is an example of evolutionary ethics. Humans, being in the bizarre position that we're in of not only being able to affect our own evolution, but being aware that we're doing it, are faced with moral decisions about whether the good of us trumps the good of everything else, and whether progress makes it okay to change or destroy everything around us. Through science and technology, humans have drastically altered our own lifespans. Fewer early deaths, less disease, less threat of starvation. All of these are great things, but the cost is that we modify every habitat that we touch. We take resources away from everything else in the world. We can literally bring water to a desert, but in the process we disrupt all the places that the water used to be. Rigorous testing means that our pharmaceutical products are safer to use, but this testing process often involves using animals as our test subjects. To the Glorzos, taking over a new planet and glorifying them is a great thing. To the humans that are about to be Glorzoed, maybe they'd beg to differ. And so again, we arrive at another Rick and Morty episode where both sides of the philosophical argument seem to be wrong. Appeal to nature sucks, but Glorzo-style progress at all costs sucks too. Am I personally happy about progress? You betcha! 150 years ago, over 40% of people born didn't survive until adulthood. But do I always want to live with the guilt of, well, living? Well, it turns out the argument doesn't end here. Listen to Bruce's argument again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you respect, like, the biological institutions now? All you care about is progress and society and skyscrapers. There's something more subtle than progress versus nature implied here. Bruce, while he's talking about wanting to go back to the old days, implies that Steve's way of life is just progress for progress's sake. If all Steve cares about is skyscrapers, then yeah, that is kind of lame. He's saying that there's no greater purpose to what Steve is building, versus at least if you're living 30 minutes and pooping out an egg, you know what your purpose in life is. In the end, it may well be that Bruce isn't opposed to progress in and of itself, so much as he's opposed to living in a society that only cares about the totems of progress. Only cares about the externalities. After all, the Glorzo is Peace movement hasn't made life better for Bruce. In fact, the reason he resents it is because it separated him from the one person that he loved. Why do you hate her so because much? she took you away from me! A life, even a life that is long and full of flashy technology and infinite infrastructure, isn't necessarily a life that's worthwhile if it doesn't have meaning. And that is something that might resonate with a lot of people, especially those living in first world countries that are on the cutting edge of what might be called human progress. Paradoxically, rates of depression are higher in wealthier countries than they are in poorer countries. And within those countries, richer neighborhoods actually have higher suicide rates than lower income neighborhoods. There are a lot of people who, maybe like Bruce, feel that even if society has improved, they've been left behind. Or, as Morty points out, being stuck in a society that's obsessed with advancing itself and squeezing every last bit of productivity out of every single one of its working citizens can leave people feeling like they're just cogs in the machine. Wow, just cogs in the machine. Yeah, I'm sure you'll make this into a beautiful short film that your parents will pay for, Morty. Even Bruce's admission that all he wants to do is have a family with Steve is a hallmark of the meaningless progress machine that plays out here in the real world. I want a family. Can we have a family? Today, countries that have modernized have fewer families and smaller family sizes. In 2017, the US Census reported that only about 55% of adults were married, which is a huge, huge drop compared to 1960 when 70% of adults were married. Part of this might be changing lifestyles, but birth rates have gone down too. The birth rate is now less than half of what it was in 1957. Not even all the inevitable COVID babies are going to make up for that one. Dowell Myers, a demographer at the University of Southern California, has a fascinating 
fascinating, if controversial explanation for this, saying, quote, the birth rate is a barometer of despair. According to Myers, young people won't make plans to have babies unless they're optimistic about the future, the world, and their own, and today's young adults aren't optimistic about either of those. We can point to quote-unquote objective signs that society is advancing, like the growth in GDP, but in the mind of someone like Bruce, just someone living in the society, progress isn't something that can be measured in the number of skyscrapers being built. At the start of the episode, we mentioned that Bruce is guilty of making a logical fallacy with his appeal to nature. Not everything that's natural is naturally good. However, Steve himself might be guilty of making a logical fallacy in the opposite direction. Argumentum ad novitatum. For all of you who don't speak Latin out there, that's appeal to novelty, which claims that something is better just because it's newer or more modern. But that's false. Not all change is necessarily progress in the right direction. In the end, the two characters set aside their differences and settle on a different path forward. Let's just get out of here and be whatever we want. That's evolution. That's progress. Much like Steve and Bruce, we also need to find the middle path as we figure out what our personal definition of progress is. It's not good to cling to the old ways just because they're more natural, but we also don't want to fetishize some abstract idea of modernity and become obsessed with building society in a way that actually leaves people worse off. Much like Glorzo, human society has advanced in a way that's allowing us to live a longer lifespan rather than dying prematurely at a young age, but if we achieve all of that progress and fail to take the opportunity to actually live that life in a fulfilling way, then what was it all for? Four. That seems to be the real story. And then they poop their pants on the living room floor. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And make sure you subscribe because the season of Rick and Morty is coming to a close. And you can bet that we're going to have at least one, if not two more Rick and Morty analysis videos coming your way.